Hi there, it's your girl C from transvoicelessons.com and in this video we are going to talk about one bad habit that you have to make sure you avoid when you're working on voice alteration. So throughout my years of modifying my own voice and helping modify the voice of thousands of other people, there is one really common mistake and habit that creeps in that a lot of people don't even realize is happening. And this is the lips looking really awkward, right? Like, like doing something like that. If you look back at all my earliest videos from 2017, 2016, 2018, what you'll start to see is that there's this very specific look on my face next to my lips. And it's because I was accidentally tightening my lips or pulling my lips a little bit backwards when I was feminizing my voice. And this is a really common sympathetic behavior. So it's a behavior that tends to happen when you don't want it to as other things start to happen. You know, what's really interesting is a lot of trans individuals in the community have actually been told at one time or another that they should smile to get a little bit more feminine. This actually used to be common advice that speech pathologists used to give in the late 90s and early 2000s. And we totally do not want to follow this advice. This is really, really bad advice. It's true that when you smile, you might sound a little bit younger, you might sound a little more feminine, yeah, but it's not the sort of quality we associate with a sex modification or a direct gender modification. Generally, when someone is trying to masculinize their voice, they'll have a tendency to push their lips out. And when someone's trying to feminize their voice, they'll have a tendency to pull their lips back. We do not want to rely on any of these. It's okay if a little bit of that starts to happen, but we should not be over relying on that. So there are a couple problems with this. One, if you're sitting there creasing your face constantly while you talk, in a way you're actually accelerating facial aging, right? Because you're creasing the skin here, you're creasing your nasolabial folds, and this is obviously not very good for our long-term aesthetic goals or our skin in general. Two, there are gonna be all sorts of times when you're speaking where you need to frown instead of smile, or you've gotta push your lips out or whatever. And in all of these different life situations, that can't make you pass less. We shouldn't be forced into literally smiling if we wanna sound feminine. That doesn't really make sense and that's not really sustainable for what we're after, right? And three, it also just looks awkward. It's something that can start to be a pretty obvious tell that someone is actually modifying their voice, right? Like when you're meeting someone and you're having a conversation with them, most people's voices are relaxed, their faces are relaxed. And so if your face is constantly tense the entire time when you're talking to someone, it's gonna make it really obvious that you're doing something and this is obviously not part of the goal. In a way, it's kind of like a crutch because when you do widen out your lips or diverge your lip shape, you do hear a brightening of the sound. It will sound like the resonances went higher, but it's not exactly the way that we want them to, right? Like we should be able to modify our voice and change our gender expression with our lips out, with our lips pulled back, it doesn't matter. So like for instance, if I push my lips out, um, I should be able to sound more masculine or I should be able to sound more feminine. There shouldn't really be a, there shouldn't really be a huge difference in my gender presentation if my lips are changing in slightly different positions. So given the fact that it is not very good for our skin and our overall aesthetics, it is a pretty obvious physical tell that we're modifying our voice and it's functionally and contextually not appropriate to smile in some conversations. Clearly, we need to reduce our dependency on any awkward or unwanted lip alteration. One of the easiest ways to do this is just to start practicing in a mirror. Make sure if you've been working on your voice that you spend a little bit of time either looking at a webcam or talking into a mirror and make sure all your facial gestures are looking natural and looking the way you want them to look. Another simple solution for this is to practice masculinizing or feminizing your voice while you are actually neutralizing your lips with your hands. So the way I like to do this is I'll take my pinkies and I'll put my pinkies on the corner of my lips like this, right? And when I do this, I shouldn't sound particularly more masculine. I might sound a little bit rounder or a bit more muffled, but I shouldn't sound masculine. And then in that position, you can practice different resonance exercises. You can practice just speaking in your fem sound and make sure that you are divorcing this association of the lips spreading and pulling back from the overall movement of voice feminization or masculinization. 
One of the things that I notice particularly in voice feminization students is this tendency to associate control of the back of the throat with the lips. So oftentimes people can successfully alter their resonance, but only if their lips are involved. And so we can get some really great progress and growth by juxtaposing different combinations of lip control against resonance control. So you might do something like this, neutralizing your lips, starting large and getting smaller. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 bear, bear, purr, right? Or you can do it a different way where your lips are back like this, right? And then you're gonna try to make your face larger while still keeping the smile. You're just trying to disassociate your lip relationship from what's going on internally with resonance and what's going on with the overall gender effect in resonance modification. The way I like to think about the lips is they're like a blanket over like a speaker, right? If you put a blanket over a speaker, whatever the speaker's doing gets a little bit muffled, right? That's the equivalent of doing this. So as long as your speaker is still creating the sound you want, in this case, a feminine sound or masculine sound, pushing your lips out shouldn't make it sound, you know, not feminine or not masculine. It should just make it sound more blanketed or more muffled or more sort of, or rounder. Conversely, spreading your lips back and outwards shouldn't really profoundly change the gender perception or the gender or sex alteration of your voice, it should just make you sound like you removed a blanket from a speaker that's covered up, right? And so listen for that quality, try to practice and make sure that you don't allow yourself to have any bad lip habits. Here are a couple clips of me from my earliest videos. Watch the corners of my lips, how they're like pursing together like that. I don't know why I used to do that so much. It just is a really common habit for people. So be on the lookout for this and try to avoid it. Make sure to practice your vocal goals with all different shapes of the lips and try to detach and disassociate lip modification from the overall modifications that you're doing as a whole. Hi, I'm Ziana from transvoicelessons.com. And in this video, I wanna show you how I turned uh, this voice into this voice, okay? It took me two years, but I'm gonna tell you in one minute. So. We're cruising along life, and then we have to work, right? <sighs> Gotta go do our job. So we leave our idle state, we go and work. Then we come back to our idle state, and then we live life, right? And it's like, oh, well now I have to cook food. You leave your idle state, unless cooking is your idle state. So in summary, the lips often come along for the ride and we don't want them to. If you're feminizing, make sure that your lips are not awkwardly spreading backwards. If you're masculinizing, make sure your lips are not awkwardly pushing forward. You should be able to get sufficient masculinization and feminization regardless of your lip position. And we need to make sure that our lips are separate from the movement because they can cause some impacts to our overall skin and our lovely beauty. They can make a visible tell on our face that we are modifying our voice. And they can also accidentally lead us astray, thinking that we are working on the thing we want to be working on, but actually we aren't. And also there are just situations where it is contextually inappropriate to smile, right? Like if someone is telling you their family member recently died and you're only able to feminize your voice if you smile, that's not gonna be very appropriate. So definitely practice trying to neutralize your lips, making sure you can explore that full range of feminization and masculinization and otherwise you'll do great. So yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to post down below as always. If you would like to support the work we're doing on this channel, please check us out at Patreon at the link down below. We are currently in the process of upscaling and upgrading our setup so we can have a whole content production team and get all this really important life-saving information out there for everybody. If you would like to work together in private lessons, just check us out at transvoicelessons.com slash booking. We have group classes and private lessons available. I'm really proud to announce that we now have a new teacher working with us, Vivian. She's really awesome and I'm sure everyone will love her. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. Take care and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.